Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming out to this midnight vigil. It warms my heart to see your faith in abundance. And I'll tell you right now, it's gonna pay off because tonight we have a special sermon from the Cardinal Larson of the Archdiocese of the Church of the Seven Trusted Greases. Cardinal Larson, the floor is yours. Thank you, Brother Reed. Thank you, Pastor Andrew. It truly is an impressive congregation y'all gathered here today. I'll tell you, so few tumors. Good to see. Last place. Ah, you know, the Lord made all of us, but some of us, he made ugly and vomitous, ready from conception for the licks of hot, hot hell. <clears throat> to those of you who do not recognize me, I'm Cardinal Larson uh, from the Archdiocese of the Seven Trusted Greases. Uh, you can all uh, tell my position because of this special hat I wear, which is uh, two feet tall. It's not as a piece of a saint, I can't remember which one, but I got a piece of her uh, decrepit hams up in this piece. Anywho, I've been traveling all over the parishes for the last month to wish every one of you personally a most blessed common days. Boy, I see some funny faces right now. <laughs> uh, you aren't sure what that means, am I right? Common days, you know, what's this big old goof talking about? Ah, huh? yeah, well, uh, we all know about Christ's Mass, the proclamation of the Fessarine Feetsies, the Holy Grease Giving, the Feast of All Greens, and who could forget Boy's Pentecost? Yet, during those between times, the common days, we forget why we gather. You see, my beloved congregation, we forgot the, the small matters. How often have we said the, that refrain, the story must be told? The story must be told. The story must be told. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thought we met the, only the big stories. Yeah, who could forget such bold tales? The tricks of Saint Mulchit, uh, who uh, castrated King Jorge and his children. Or the uh, impressive epic of uh, Lord's brother descending from heaven naked atop a swan so we might make crops of our plants and brides of our dogs. Boy, I love that one. We have such lustrous stories during the holidays. We forget the uh, real stories that matter, the ones we live. <clears throat> I was talking just last week with Helmut Bungarden. He works uh, as a custodian down at the elementary and he told me he hadn't seen a balloon in 15 years. A balloon, I asked him, and he says, Oh, of course, the kind you see at a birthday party. He hadn't been to a birthday party for all those years. And I count of all the balloons of grease bubbling under his skin, so he looked like an action figure in a microwave. Well, well you know what I did? I made an announcement down at St. Slug and Touches, and the next day after service, Mrs. Turnclamp hands me a shiny red balloon. Make him happy, she tells me. I brought it to old Helmut, and you know what he did? He started crying told me his tumors had started leaking and the grease of the gray stained his bedclothes and soiled his mattress. He told me no one cared whether he lived or died. I didn't correct him, of course. Perhaps there is a Lord, but, you know, he's a distant clockmaker and his clock, well, it is broken. Helmut popped the balloon and that's the last time I ever saw him. <laughs> All right, listen, you know, some stories ain't funny like that one. I talked to a parishioner just two months back who told me the cross she bore. She had a daughter who she couldn't eat proper. Unlike the other children fermented in this filth landscape of steaming puddles and ashing grasses, her second stomach couldn't process plastic, you know? She needed real food with none of the micro beads crunching in her molars from lotions and soaps of yesteryear. So Mother Grinsty, she Woke up every morning an hour before the crack of dawn. She scavenged the, the fresh filth outside the pastures of wealth. Grinsty was always the, the first one there, you know, to claim the best plastic-free scraps for her kid. But you know how the Lord burdens us one day? A, a misstep sent her down the slope and into a heap of glass and stones. Woo, that's tough. Busted up her femur so bad that she had to gather with a limp. Soon, no matter how early Grinsty left, other parents took her food first, and there was nothing 
to feed her grub-loving youngster. She told me all this during confession. You know, and that's supposed to be a secret, but fucking you don't know her. So what do you do, I asked her, you know, and she smiled. And Gritsy uh, said she crafted a plan, just like the mother of frogs did on the night of thy children crying. She did not go to the junkyards in the morning, but crept into all of her neighbors' lawns in the night. To their uh, snoutless dogs and feral hairy babes, she tossed pellets of poison most foul. For the Lord said, Swallow thee thy seed of illness, and squirm within thy sin's reward. Come light a day, no father and no mother left their homes to scavenge. Instead, they spent the mornings burying their stiff-limbed dead, while they brushed dry foam from the dead mouths, pierced shale with their spades, Grinsty gathered all the rotten food she could cart home. Oh, and her daughter did rejoice. Of course, the little girl died weeks later, but that doesn't change the story. That, that's just something kids do these days. You see, outside our favorite liturg liturgical, outside our favorite liturgical tales, there, there are yet stories to tell. One last one, one last one, I'll get out of your hair, I promise. And then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll go down to uh, Our Lady of uh, Collected Skins and then uh, to Tubby Matthews Praesatorium. The Archdiocese keeps me plenty busy. <laughs> uh, it was six months back and I was delivering a sermon just like I am now over at Pine Hollow's Old Folks Pre-Crematorium. I always see the best smiles on my trips there. Toothless, gummy red smiles, but, you know, they're the best. Well... There was an old fellow there named Rotsko, all right, and uh, he used to be the biggest grouch you ever saw. Hey there, Rotsko, I'd say, and he'd just rump and spit on the ground, grumpy as all else. He'd cuss out an angel if God still made any. Woo! <laughs> Those days are long gone. I prayed for him, though, every night. I like to pray for all of you. So uh, imagine how I feel the last time I come by, and the nurse, she says... Old Roscoe? Oh dear, Cardinal Lawson, he passed away two weeks ago. Now this was sad, you know, this is sad news to me. Because I always hoped that, like, I'd be able to save his soul before he passed. Well, turns out he still had a couple twists in the story. I asked the nurse, I goes up to her, you know, and I, I says, uh, hey, did he die in peace? And she says, uh, oh, Roscoe was gentle as a lamb when he died. A lamb? I was like, we can't be talking about the same Rotsko. Rotsko I knew could make a lamb cry. But sure enough, she told me, he changed. Yeah, listen, I mean, Rotsko was blind and incontinent. He, he left a drippy trail pretty much everywhere he went, and he always complained about how slippery the floors were. Well, <laughs> freaking guy. Uh, one day, he, he's going to the latrine, no plumbing, of course, just one big indoor stink hole you can smell at every corner of the place. Well. He can't see the puddle that he made outside the hole, and he's ready to go, and he slips, crack. Shattered his weak old dome on a tin latrine rim, and he passes right out. Now, no one said who it was who did it, but whoever followed Rotsko didn't like him. Not one bit. Whoever it is, they find Rotsko, and they'll tell nobody. You know what they do? They shove his body down the hole to join all the stinks. Rotsko doesn't drown too stubborn. <laughs> he slips down up to his neck in the stuff. You know, he's uh, blind as can be. It's too vicious to lift himself out. So he tries calling for help, but he can't speak loud enough, you know? And so, you know, old folks can be uh, whispering with no teeth. And, you know, we, we talked about their mouths. The staff there, well, days pass and they can't seem to find old Rotsko. They're searching everywhere, calling out, Rotsko, Rotsko, where'd you go, Rotsko? Now, of course, uh, the whole time everyone is using a latrine just as normal. It's five days later when the old widow Clapnut loses her room key down the hole, and they shine a flashlight, and what did you know it? There's old Rotsko. He's up to his nose in his stuff, and what does he do? He waves. <laughs> Cheery as can be. They say the last two days after they fished him out before the septic shock took him, he was the happiest he'd been in years. Down in the filth of humanity, he truly had the Lord in his heart, just like I had prayed for. I have that power. I could do it to any one of you. All right? Listen to me. I said it. I'll say it again. 
I have that power. I could do it to any one of you. Well, I thank you for all your hospitality. You've welcomed me in here, this fine parish, and you, you listen kindly. But before I go, I, I got one thing to ask. I, anyone got 40 marks? Yeah, I'll take 20. Uh, shit, right out. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'll take 20, you know, 10, you know. It doesn't have to be just one person. You get six or seven of you to pitch in, and you know, and I'll leave here with a grin on my face and a prayer in my heart. Yeah, you know, I travel all around, and I depend on generosity. Of course, I'll keep it to myself. I will tell you what, that's a promise. Some folks get mad. If I give you a mark, you'll just give it to some tumor dripping beggar. <laughs> that's not the case. Never has been. Please, forty marks. Please, God, I I need this, okay? I just, I need it. You you don't know what I've seen. You don't know the trials I have endured. The Lord wants you to give me your money. Someone needs to tell him to stop. Someone needs to tell him to stop. Just as much as you can part with, I can just not take a little bit. Just come Someone on, guys. I, no one's reaching for the purse. No one's reaching. I see purses. I see hands. I don't see hands and purses. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to flip out, but I'm going crazy. Tell him. To stop. Tell me if I'm out of line. The Lord wants you to give me your Tell money. Me to stop. All right. Tell me if I'm out of line. Please. Stop. That's why I trust your input. Uh, Cardinal Larson, that's going to be. All right, I'm begging now. I'm all right. I'm begging you. Don't, don't turn stop. away from me. I can see you. I'm a cardinal. I see everything. Thank you, Cardinal Larson, if you wouldn't mind, we have another. Fine. I'll go. Fucking son of a bitch, cocksucker, waste of time. Telling all these fake stories, fucking idiots. Oh, is this thing on? Shit! Brother, you just made it a million times worse. Ah! Uh, see you next year! Common days! You're a coward. You're a goddamn coward. I've seen what you've done. The entire parish has seen what you've done. With the congregation as my witness, you will cleanse me. You will wash me with rags until I shine with your mess. This story must be told. This story must be told.